Hello, everyone. This is Zayami from FilmFestivalCircuit.com and the assistant director of the Oregon Documentary Film Festival. We're gearing up for our uh, March 12th event. It's just going to be this weekend. Uh, we're going to have it at the Clint Street Theater in Portland, Oregon. We're very excited. Uh, and today we are talking to one of the filmmakers in the festival, Josh. Thanks for meeting with me. Hey, thanks for having me on. Uh, so Josh Fair is the director of a very interesting documentary titled The Paniola. Uh, so Josh, tell us, uh, what's that about and what inspired you to make that? Sure. So I lived in Hawaii for 10 years and along the way really got deep into the culture and the people, uh, as one would do when living on a, on a small Island for that long. Totally. And, um, I was a big fan of the shows like planet earth, human planet, all those documentaries. And I kind of became inspired to to try to come up with an idea to create something similar hmm. based in Hawaii. And so um, originally I was like, you know, I want to make this, you know, uh, hour long show or six part show or whatever it was going to be. But as a kind of an independent filmmaker, I found a lot of challenges trying to come up with the funding to do something that big. Totally. So I decided, well, let's just try to do one single story. And I was just fascinated by the, cowboy culture of Hawaii and the ranching culture of Hawaii. Um, I grew up in a small town in Indiana, and so I could sort of relate to that, but I found it really fascinating that Hawaii even had this culture. Um, totally. So I wanted to kind of show that unexpected aspect of Hawaii that most people wouldn't think of when they thought of Hawaii. Um, and then kind of as the film starts out and shows, you know, you think of the beaches and the tourism, and yep. the crystal blue waters, but you don't really think of that part of Hawaii. And so that was what inspired me to, to do that. Totally. And how, how did you get acquainted with that culture? That's so interesting. Yeah. So you have eight main islands of Hawaii and you do have all of your cultural or your uh, tourism mm -hmm. uh, aspects to it that everyone knows about. Um, but even on the Oahu, which is the most crowded of all the islands where I lived, you do have that country life. You just got to go maybe a half an hour, 45 minutes outside of the town of Honolulu, and you'll see it. Um, but it also exists on all the other islands in Maui and Kauai and on the big island of Hawaii, which is where the film was based in. So uh, just kind of, you know, being there long enough to kind of see it and totally uh, kind of is how I came across it. Nice. And so um, it looks like uh, you have uh, a heavy uh, like history of commercial filmmaking. And then this is your first, uh, uh, you know, uh, produced documentary that you made. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So kind of the long story short, I originally am from Indiana, like, as I said, and right. moved to Hawaii in 2004. And from there, I started doing event filmmaking, weddings, things of that nature, and then transitioned doing some of the commercial and corporate work on top of that. Um so yeah, that was kind of how uh, I kind of stumbled into this this okay, career. Okay, yeah. Well, now I'm curious. Uh, with this being your first documentary, what kind of challenges did you face, and what did you learn from this process? So the first challenge that I had was probably the biggest. Uh, one of the uh, places featured in the documentary is called Parker Ranch, hmm. and Parker Ranch is this massive, sprawling, hundred thousand plus acre ranch on the Big Island. And originally, I uh, was just going to start with them. I thought, well, you know, I can just show up. I'll just talk to some people, kind of get the ball rolling. And that didn't happen. Um, wow. uh, I had actually moved to California in 2014, but still go back and forth quite a bit. And on my flight out to Hawaii, uh, I was reading one of the in-flight magazines and they featured Barbara Nobriga in the magazine, which is what the film is actually, uh, the mm. story is about. And so I kind of just casually was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Let me, let me just hold on to this. You know, I'll take it out there. Maybe I can, you know, talk to her too. We'll see. And when I got out there and I showed up at Parker Ranch, they were just kind of gave me the cold shoulder. Didn't really, you know, want to oh. have anything to do with me. So, uh, which was fine, I guess, you know, I'm just some random person showing up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it turned out to be the best blessing in disguise because uh, I met Barbara. Awesome. Well, that, that is nice. And it's, it is really one of the hard things about documentary, especially profiling uh, uh, a subculture, 
It's just like, how do you walk in there with a camera and say, hey, I'm trying to do you justice. Let's let's show something about you. And, uh, you know, I've talked to a lot of people who have to work for a long time to overcome that sort of barrier. But uh, it's cool that you got a chance to talk to Barbara and uh, get into it. Was there anything, um, you know, precisely with, uh, you know, the difference between commercial and then something like this that's a passion project uh, that you experienced that you'd like to expand on? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of us who are filmmakers, we do this because we love filmmaking and we love telling stories. And for me, this was that passion project. Um, you know, anything I'm doing, whether I'm getting paid or I'm not getting paid, I'm going to do it the best that I can. That's just kind of mm -hmm. how I am. And I'm sure how most filmmakers watching this are. Um, when you're getting paid, it's a little different. You have resources, you have, you know, maybe a producer that you're, you're answering to. Right. Um, so you may don't, maybe don't have that creative freedom completely, but you have the resources and the finances behind it. So it's a little more easier. Um, I think being kind of the director on this and, and producer was an advantage because I wasn't really constrained by anything. And, you know, along the journey of the film, that really was key to being able to kind of tell the story as it evolved, as we talked to Barbara, as we learn more about all the different, you know, things related to ranching culture in Hawaii mm. and how it ties into the community um, really was ultimately a good thing. Nice. Um, so now I'm curious, uh, what are you working on next? Do you have any other documentaries, anything else rooted in Hawaii that you're working on? Well, uh, this film actually began filming way back in 2017, if you can believe it. Oh, that. wow. Okay. It took about three and a half years to finish because of my location where I live and COVID and things like that. Mm -hmm. The ultimate kind of my hope with filming this was to do other stories in Hawaii. Okay. So, yeah. For example, the title would be the Hidden Hawaii. Other stories like this that most people would be find to be unexpected. Right. So I would love to hopefully be able to sell this to uh, a network or uh, you know uh, someone that would be interested in producing more of these types of stories. Uh, as it is, I'm just basically working on commercial projects at uh, at the moment, keeping busy with that. I have a newborn. So life's pretty busy at the moment. Oh, totally. <laughs> um, but always looking for that next great story um, and passion project for sure. Awesome. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to add about the Paniola? Yeah, people ask me a lot about the title, Paniola. Mm. Uh, Paniolo is actually the name of a the Hawaiian cowboy. Mm. Um, but what most people don't know is that it's rooted in a Spanish name for Paniola. Okay. And the Spanish, Mexican Spanish, but Spanish language, but Mexican cowboys were the ones who brought over their culture to oh, interesting. So it's a little bit of a nod to the Mexican culture. Also, I think most people don't think of ranching ranchers being 83 year old women. Right. So kind of <laughs> taking that Paniolo and turning it into a feminine name. Mm. That was sort of the creative uh, thinking behind the title of it. Totally. Well, uh, I'm very excited to screen this on March 12th, and uh, I'm, I'm actually really interested in seeing more from Hidden Hawaii, putting a face to uh, the the country or the, 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 the culture that we uh, don't really have sights on beyond beaches and tourism. So that sounds really cool. Thank you so much for talking with me. I think it's going to be a, a great screening this weekend. Great. Thank you so much again for having me. I appreciate it. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye.